Welcome to Present Poetry, a reading podcast with your host, Erin Crittenden. All poems used in this podcast are either public domain or used with permission from the author or the estate. So sit back, relax, and get ready to hear some poetry from the past and the present. This week's featured poet is Walter de la Mer. Walter John de la Mer was born April 25, 1873, in London, to James Edward de la Mer, a principal at the Bank of England, and Lucy Sophia, James's second wife and the daughter of Scottish naval surgeon and author Dr. Colin Errett Browning. He was educated at the St. Paul Cathedral School until 1890, when he got a job at the Statistics Department of the London Office of Standard Oil. In 1892, de la Mer joined the Esperanza Amateur Dramatics Club, where he met and fell in love with Constance Alfreda Ingpen, the leading lady. Though she was 10 years his senior, they were married in 1899 and went on to have four children. Sadly, his wife got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 1940 and ended up dying three years later. In the 18 years that de la Mer worked for the statistics office, he still found time to write. And, in 1908, through the efforts of Sir Henry Newbolt, Lemaire received a civil pension which enabled him to quit his job and write full-time. Though his writings covered a variety of genres, his favorite things to write were ghost stories and other supernatural tales. These horror writings were the favorite of none other than H.P. Lovecraft, who remarked that de la Mer is able to put into his occasional fear studies keen potency which only a rare master can achieve. De La Mer has also inspired other supernatural and horror writers, including Robert Eichmann, Ramsey Campbell, David A. McGinty, and Reggie Oliver. And he has also been touted as one of modern literature's chief exemplars of the Romantic imagination. Unfortunately, De La Mer suffered from a coronary thrombosis and died on June 22, 1956, at the ripe old age of 83. His ashes are now interred under the St. Paul Cathedral School, where he once attended as a boy. We are reading from his collection, Motley and Other Poems, which was published in 1918. This poem is called The Ghost. Who knocks? I, who was beautiful beyond all dreams to restore. I, from the roots of the dark thorn, am hither, and knock on the door. Who speaks? I, once was my speech, sweet as the birds on the air, when echo lurks by the waters to heed, tis I speak thee fair. Dark is the hour, I am cold. Lone is my house, ah, but mine? Sight, touch, lips, eyes yearn in vain, long dead these to thine. Silence, still faint on the porch, break the flames of the stars. In gloom groped a hope-wearied hand over keys, bolts, and bars. A face peered, all the gray night, in chaos of vacancy shone. Not but vast sorrow was there. The sweet cheat gone. This poem is titled, The Disguise. Why in my heart, O grief, does thou in beauty bide? Dead is my well content, and buried deep my pride. Cold are their stones, beloved, to hand and side. The shadows of even are gone, shut are the day's clear flowers. Now have her birds left mute, their singing bowers. Lone shall we be, we twain, in the night hours. Thou with thy cheek on mine, and dark hair loosed, shall see. Take the far stars for fruit, the cypress tree, and in the used black shall the moon be. We will tell no old tales, nor heed if in wandering air Die a lost song of love, or the once fair, 
Still as well water be the thoughts we share. And while the ghosts keep tryst from chill sepulchres, dreamless our gaze shall sleep and sealed our ears. Heart unto heart will speak without tears. O oh, thy veiled lovely face, joy's strange disguise, shall be the last to fade from these rapt eyes, ere the first dart of daybreak pierce the skies. This poem is titled, The Marionettes. Let the foul scene proceed. There's laughter in the wings. Tis sawdust that they bleed, but a box death brings. How rare a skill is theirs, these extreme pangs to show. How real a frenzy wears, each feigner of woe. Gigantic dins uprise, even the gods must feel, the smarting of the eyes, as these fumes upsweal. Strange, such a piece is free, while we spectators sit, aghast at its agony, yet absorbed in it. Dark is the outer air, coldly the night droughts blow. Mutely we stare and stare at the frenzied show. Yet heaven hath its quiet shroud of deep immutable blue. We cry and end, we are bowed, by the dread tis true. While the shape who hoofs applause behind our deafened ears hoots angel-wise the cause and a fright even fear. This poem is called Dust to Dust. Heavenly archer, bend thy bow. Now the flame of life burns low. Youth is gone, I too would go. Ever fortune leads to this. Harsh or kind, at last she is murderous of all ecstasies. Yet the spirit, dark alone, bound in sense, still hearkens on for tidings of a bliss foregone. Sleep as well for dreamless head, at no breath astonished, from the gardens of the dead. I, the immortal harps, hear ring, by Babylon's river languishing. Heavenly archer, loose thy string. This poem is titled, Motley. Come, death, I'd have a word with thee, and thou, poor innocency, and love, a lad with broken wing, and pity, too, the fool shall sing to you, as fools will sing. I music hath small sense, and a tune soon told, and earth is old, and my poor wits are dense, yet I have secrets, dark, my dear, to breathe you all, come near. Unless some hideous listener tells, I'll ring my bells. They are all at war. Yes, yes, their bodies go, Neath a burning sun and icy star, To chaunted songs of woe, Dragging cold cannons through a mire Of rain and blood and spouting fire, The new moon glinting hard on eyes, Wide with insanities. Hush, I use words I hardly know the meaning of, And the mute birds are glancing at love, from out their shade of leaf and flower, trembling at treacheries, which even in the noonday cower, heed, heed not what I said of frenzied hosts of men, more fools than I, on envy, hatred fed, who kill and die. Spake I not plainly then? Yet pity whispered, why? Thou silly thing, off to thy daisies go, mine was not the news for a child to know, and death no ears hath, he has supped where creep, eyeless worms in hush of sleep. Yet when he smiles, the hand he draws, athwart his grinning jaws, faintly the thin bones rattle, and there, there, hearken how my bells in the air drive away care. Nay, but a dream I had of a world all mad, not simply happy mad like me, who am mad like an empty scene of water and willow tree where the wind hath been, but that foul Satan mad, who rots in his own head, and counts the dead, not honest one and two, before the ghosts they were, brave, 
faithful, true. When head and air, and earth's clear green and blue, heaven they did share with beauty who bade them there. There now, death goes, mayhaps I've wearied him. I and the light doth dim, and asleep's the rose, and tired innocence, and dreams is hence. Come, love, my lad, nodding that drowsy head, tis times thy prayers were said. Thank you for listening to this episode of Present Poetry. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review, share us on social media, or subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you would like to learn more about the featured poet, or you would like your work featured on the podcast, please check out the links in the show notes. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.